Good morning. My name is Pej Roshan. I run product management for uh, management and cloud services here at Aruba. And I'm excited to talk to you about Aruba Central. Aruba Central is our cloud networking platform. And if I can think of two attributes that stand out for Central for me, it is around simple and easy to use and choice. Now, when, I, when you think about simple and easy to use and choice, those, those things typically pull, pull against one another. They're not um, typically uh, things you would associate as, as similar. They're strange bedfellows. But I'm really proud of the job we've done at marrying these two concepts together. I've got a couple things I'm going to talk about today, or, or at least focus in on. I'm going to talk about how simple and easy it is to use Aruba Central uh, in your native language with our new localization capabilities. I'll talk about the choice we offer in the infrastructure you can use, in this case switching in particular with Aruba Central. How easy it is to customize Aruba Central using our new API gateway. The choice in how our partners can take Aruba Central to market with our MSP <coughs> capabilities. And then finally, how easy it is to use our analytics capabilities with our first cloud analytics application, Presence Analytics. So that's what I'm, I'm going to cover in the next 30 to 40 minutes. Hopefully you'll uh, agree with me at the, at the end of that, that it is indeed both simple and easy to use, as well as provides flexibility and choice. So I want to dive into localization first. The last year has been a huge year for Aruba Central. Uh, we've grown not only in North America, but in all the geographies that Aruba uh, supports today. And so with that, we're introducing uh, native language support for <coughs> Spanish, French, and German, in addition to English. And we'll, be, we'll continue to add uh, language support in subsequent uh, drops of, of cloud releases. <coughs> the thing that's really slick about this is you can now use the administrative interface in your native language, and it's super simple to enable. Now, with me today is Vishal Mann. He's going to be manning the demos. Vishal, can you show us? a look at uh, localization in Central? Sure, Pej. So you would go under the user settings, and you can see a couple of language options available for us. Uh, let's choose Spanish, for example. <coughs> and nearly every option that you can look at is available for Spanish and the other languages are available for use as well. So it may seem like a triviality, but this is really quite powerful for global breadth. Being able to use the application, manage the solution in your native language is key, and we're, we're pleased to be able to introduce that with our new localization capability. The next thing I want to talk about is our introduction for HPE Aruba switches. So We've made it a mantra in the organization around Central to not force a particular line of hardware uh, to use with the cloud service. We want to offer the same choice in using um, the infrastructure on premises as we do in the cloud. And with that, it makes logical sense to extend that to the HPE switching lines. And we've done that in our latest release with support for the 2900 series switches. And again, with each subsequent drop, we'll be introducing um, support for the expanded HPE uh, switch product line. The key thing with how we've introduced switching is that we've made the operation configuration, provisioning, monitoring, troubleshooting, have the same uh, workflows. So you have the same muscle memory in how you're troubleshooting wireless LAN as well as um, the wired network without straying too far away from common techniques you would you would use in, in troubleshooting wireless networking or the types of reports or troubleshooting you would do uh, in wired networking as well. So again, the best thing I can do here to, to uh, emphasize this is to show you how it works. So Vishal? 
Sure. So as an Aruba customer, uh, Aruba already knows what all devices have been shipped to you. So they are already populated under the inventory section, telling us, telling you that what all devices have been shipped to you, because we already know that. But that is not limited there. We can add the devices by MAC address, serial number, zero touch them using uh, the Aruba Central application as well. And as you can see, we are looking at uh, Aruba switch here, which has been, which has checked in, and we can manage the firmware of the devices. It's a clear notification that the firmware is up to date. Uh, updating the device is as simple as clicking it and hitting update firmware. Vishal, do you have to run the same firmware version across all the switches? No, absolutely no. You have complete flexibility depending on your site requirements, depending on device requirements, what software you want to run on them. Uh, we necessarily don't push upgrades or anything like that. You can choose what exact software you want to run. So once you have um, made sure that you're running the right software, next thing you might want to do, you might want to configure the switch. So let's take a quick look at that. So I can configure the admin status, POE status of the ports. OK, I can define new VLANs. I can tag them, create trunk ports and um, access ports. I can define system level details, administrative username, password, etc. Once you have done those kind of configuration, you would be interesting into monitoring the device. So let's take a quick look at what all it offers in monitoring. Well, you were just in the midst of configuring, and how did you immediately jump into monitoring from the configuration menus? Yeah, the, the app is smart enough. It's seamlessly integrated. We were in the configuration section. I just click on the switch. It takes me to the monitoring view. Now, when I'm in the monitoring view, it gives me a very neat idea of what is the throughput of the device, what are the port status, gives me a pictorial view of it. What are the switch port settings? Are there trunk access, in and out transmission? Also, it has detailed information about the device itself, uptime. All this information can be changed from, uh, you, can, you can basically get it from three hours, one day, one week, one month, to a three month period. All the logs from the device are also lively populated over here into the central for your consumption. So this is great if I'm uh, just looking for basic monitoring capabilities, right? I want to go in there and get run my report, see what's going on, get a, a health check. Uh, what if there's a, a network issue and I want to troubleshoot? So for me, my muscle memory is to jump on on a, a terminal and and start uh, and start troubleshooting. How would I do that from Central? Sure. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the. Let's take a look at the uh, CLI axis, okay? So you selected a switch and just grabbed its console? Yes. Now this is a, is a console session, how is this how is this actually connecting to the switch? So this console acts, this is basically a reverse SSH into the device itself using the HTTPS session that we have set up between the device and Aruba Central itself. Uh, but what it gives me flexibility is I have the whole suite of commands that I would normally run on the device right here from the browser. So I'm not limited to what I would do in the GUI. I'm right there in the CLI. I can do any kind of troubleshooting I want right here. Very good. And it's all secured, encrypted end to end. Absolutely. Like we said, it's uh, reverse SSH inside the HTTPS yes. tunnel. Very good. Now, is that, is that using a standard port or is that using some high number port? Uh, it's reverse SSH between uh, basically the device is talking to Aruba Central over HTTPS port 443, TCP port 443, and reverse SSH is inside that. So 443 is what you firewalls would, would firewall you would see. On the is that new? This capability? <coughs> well, no, the four, the 443, because historically it's been over port 9000. Uh, no, Aruba Central and device communication are over HTTPS. The destination is definitely port 443. Hmm. OK. So you can see there is consistency in, in configuration, provisioning, monitoring. 
and even in how we troubleshoot, both with how central <coughs> operates for wireless LAN and wired, as well as to what you would typically do if you were manning a keyboard and console on a premises-based deployment. So we're really excited uh, about the introduction of HP Aruba switches. And again, you'll see this product line uh, continue to expand as uh, uh, we increment these through successive releases. So when you were looking at the switch, it showed the overall throughput of the switch. Can you go down to a port and say what's the throughput on a specific port? Yeah, let's take a look at that real quick. I'm going to go under the switches section. And that's the switch. So I would drop down to the port level details. So for example, port number 23, that's the in and out I'm looking at it. You don't have like a nice graph over time so you can see historical? Yeah, the historical is not there for that. But um, yeah. OK, so one of the things that is pretty common with cloud services in general, not necessarily a cloud networking solution, but cloud services, they had an appeal to small to medium businesses initially. They were, or they are, easy to set up. The time it takes to get uh, productive on it, meaning the time from when I order the solution to when I've got access to it is very quick. It's getting your credentials and logging on, essentially, are, are very fast. And the upfront costs associated with it are low. I'm buying infrastructure if that. Um, so on a small budget, constrained budget, it's very easy for me to, to uh, buy this service and get going. But cloud, by its definition, introduces scale. You have to scale up in order to support a global uh, deployment. Even uh, regional deployments, as you, as you scale up on, on clients, have to scale vastly in order for this to work. Enterprises and service providers have not lost sight of that. They see the fact that we've built these solutions that have tremendous amounts of scale that are quick and easy to bring up. And service providers in particular love the subscription-based model. That's how they make their money today. So we've seen the number of large enterprises and service providers that are uh, interested in Central and now buying and deploying Central spike in the last 12 months. The thing that comes along with, with servicing and supporting large enterprises and service providers in particular is unlike the SMB, they have bespoke requirements. They like customizing their reports. They like customizing their interfaces. They have variated administration levels. They like to price and package in ways that are um, unique to their customer base or the way they want to go to market. And so to address that, we're introducing what we call the API gateway as part of the cloud service. The API gateway is not a new set of APIs that we're introducing. It's a new way to package our APIs and put them together, offer them. And there's three key innovations that we're introducing with the API gateway. One is around security. Each API session and call is secured and authenticated. Two is around scale. We've got cloud level scaling built into the solution. And with that, we have native multi-tenancy. So this is particularly important for our service provider customers. Three is around context. So in addition to displaying and sharing information that's coming from the device, the infrastructure, um, and the uh, uh, endpoints, we have synthesized information that's coming in, application information, uh, WLAN health that's been synthesized, and notification <coughs> information. All of this is now coming in and making the information and the API data that we're sharing about the devices context rich. These three capabilities now uh, stock in part and parcel with our API gateway. So we've made it simple for developer partners to set up the API gateway and to get access to the API calls themselves. Michelle is going to show you what that's like. We'll talk about what that means to our, our customers. So say you have an app and uh, you want uh, it to talk to Central's API gateway, I would easily just mention the name of uh, the application right over here. And we would generate a token for it. This token can be used by the app 
to talk securely uh, with Central API Gateway. So now that I've generated a token, I have an application. What do I, what do, I do next? So you have the whole suite of uh, whatever you can do with Central, whatever is exposed into the Central UI itself. Your app can basically take that feed out. And let's take a look at what all options we have. So monitoring, configuration, app RF, guest, user management, device, all those functions we were looking at, yeah, they are being exposed out there. So say if you want to create a web login page, add uh, users, guest users, all that can be done via API that talks to you. <coughs> so ostensibly, I could create my own front end for Central if I was so inclined to do so. Absolutely, yes. It gives you, uh, you, you can get the whole suite out there. I could create my own set of services based off of Central if I wanted to. Yes. So this is, this is huge for service providers in particular. <coughs> so if I'm rolling out uh, a broad set of applications that take advantage of cloud networking and applications that, that run atop the network, I can now build my own branded portal and bring out these applications together with uh, the network administration as one offering to my customers. I can have variated pricing models that are different from how Central would price it because it's a different offering altogether and have that available through my interface. I could have different administrative and authorization rights that are available that vary from what we offer in Central because I'm building this front and this is my application, my service offering as a service provider but it's powered by Aruba Central. This is a huge amount of flexibility and it's accessible from a very simple and easy set of interfaces. Enterprises, in the same fashion, are able to, to produce their own sets of reports and analytics that are able to synthesize information that they derive from uh, the infrastructure as well as their other applications together for their own impactful uh, analytics as well. And again, simple and easy to use and a core part of Aruba Central. I'll pause here. Can I answer any questions about the API Gateway? You intend to maybe have some kind of a marketplace for developers to advertise their um, integrations? I think that's something that we're thinking about at this point. Yeah. There's a significant amount of work that we still have yet to do um, as we take the API Gateway to market. So it's not as simple as uh, creating the APIs themselves. We have to document them, make sure we have support infrastructure in place. And that's all in the early stages right now as we introduce this. Once we get there, we can look at uh, building a platform so that developers can monetize it. That's the responsible, <laughs> the responsible way to do it, I would say. Okay, anything else? When, when does this go live? Cool, cool. When does API Gateway go live? Right now. So it's available. It's available now. And you'll likely see this in our next drop, which would be uh, in the next handful of weeks, go live. So I want to transition from here to uh, cloud analytics applications. So. The API Gateway highlights how we generate a tremendous amount of data. There's a lot of good feeds that you can subscribe to, both raw feeds as well as synthesized feeds uh, that are context rich. Uh, and this is all interesting data, but in order for it to be useful for an enterprise or a service provider, um, it has to be transformed into actionable information. That's the essence of analytics, is taking something that's interesting and turning it into something that's, that's actionable. We're introducing, over the next 12 months, a series of analytics applications that will do just this. And each one will be specialized and target either a different market or a different set of applications that it'll be servicing. The first one that we're gonna release is called Presence Analytics, and it's targeted at retail. The supposition is everybody's got a smartphone. Those smartphones have Wi-Fi. We can take advantage of 
uh, the Wi-Fi protocol, 802.11, to understand and get a glimpse of traffic patterns within a retail store. We can delve into people that are passers-by, that are walking in front of a store but not going in, people that are visitors that are actually coming into the store, visitors that are hanging around to shop or browse, what we refer to as uh, engagement conversions, and then for those converts, the, the amount of time that they dwell inside of the store. Now this is just uh, the first set of capabilities that we're introducing in Presence Analytics, which is available now in beta in Central, and we'll continue to augment the number of parameters uh, that we expose as we go. To walk you through uh, how easy this is to set up and how straightforward the information is presented, Michelle, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So what you're looking at over here is the Presence Analytics dashboard. The very first number is the passerby. So these are basically the clients that just passed by your establishment. How would you technically measure that is probe requests better than minus 70 dBm is what you're accounting for. And this particular uh, minus 70 dBm is configurable. So how do I know minus 70 dBm is, is a, the right value? My, our early customers have been using minus 70 dBm and it has worked out pretty well for them. However, if you have a huge uh, nationwide installation going, you would take a couple of stores and you would fine tune the value based on that. And then you can use this as a cookie cutter design for rest of the sites. I got it. So it's a good default value, but you can tweak it if you need to. And it's Absolutely, it's configurable. We give you the flexibility to do Very that. Simple. Okay. Let's Is take that a look at the variable per location. No, it's <clears throat> universal as of now. Uh, let's take a look at the next value, passerby to visitor. Uh, so. All those passerbys, that minus 70 dBm value I talked about, you can, um, all those passerbys which basically walked into your establishment would be called visitor. How you measure that is you can again set a value. The previous value was minus 70, this value is minus 65. Again, this is configurable. Uh, the next value is visitor to engaged. And uh, this is basically the visitors which are spending some time in your establishment. Uh, this is also a configurable value you're looking at. Five minutes is the value. So visitors which spend more than five minutes are called engaged. Drill time is an average time that those engaged clients are spending in your establishment. And that's, that gives you a fair idea. Now all, these, all this data is basically available for four different periods, three hours, one day, one week, and a month. Thanks, Vishal. So the power of, of these applications is that they are built atop the cloud networking platform. These are built in and included right now with the, uh, with the solution, and you're able to take advantage of it with just a couple of mouse clicks. The data is already being collected. We're just presenting that information now. This is just the tip of the iceberg as well. Again, this is the first of an entire line of applications that will, uh, that will run the gamut um, and we're really excited to get this out and get uh, customers feedback on it. Yes. Um, what option, are there options today or maybe you can elaborate kind of where you're headed with ways to slice and dice this data and I'm thinking like, you know, a lot of people go to the cloud to your point or talking, looking at scale, retail for instance, right? If I wanted to say like West Coast stores versus East Coast stores or this state versus that state. Um, do I have the ability to put those into some sort of container for analytics right now? That's a great point. You are. So we are able to, to use the store concept and being able to baseline uh, using analytics and then run promotions uh, against those, those store containers. So you could, for example, say I want to run promotion A in, in one location, run promotion B in another location and compare the results or take the same promotion and run it against multiple locations, compare the results to see how you variate by, by location type. Those insights are included. Again, simple and easy. That's the, the emphasis here, yes. How do you correlate the changes you make physically in a store to the data that you have presented? So you, you talked about promotions. So if I have a promotion on this date, how do I correlate that with the information that's being presented? That's a good question. 
So the solution today allows you to establish a baseline. And while the, the device technology introduces some challenges for us in representing um, specific or actual numbers, what we emphasize is looking at the deltas. So you would be able to take a baseline number and say 578.117 being my baseline uh, on uh, the 13th. If I run my promotion on the 14th, what are the values that I'm able to derive? And we'll continue to, to create facilities uh, to automate that process as well, so you can actually run reports in that way. Again, we'll have a suite of these coming out, and that is, that is something I'm really, really excited about. Again, taking, yes? Any future plans to make this app, to, to apply settings at a granular level um, among different access points within a store, um, maybe to get at some more specific data, get a triangulation uh, within a store and things like that? Yeah, location, location without delving into, into too much roadmap is, is definitely something we have at our fingertips to use. Great. The last area that I want to touch on is around MSP. So I talked about what service providers are doing with Central right now, using the API gateway to build custom interfaces and custom uh, amalgamated uh, service offerings. We have a large number of smaller channel partners and resellers that are also interested in cloud. <clears throat> now, typically, when a partner sells a cloud solution, they have this relationship with a customer. The customer calls up their, their trusted partner and says, hey, I'm looking for cloud networking. Um, what do you got for me? The partner says, I've got Aruba Central. Here's your access points that you can buy from me, and let me sign you up for the service. At that point, by the very nature of cloud, the relationship changes a little bit. The customer now has a direct relationship with the vendor, in, in our case, Aruba. They're subscribed to our service, they're using our service, and the very thing that the partner values the most, that customer relationship that they worked so hard to build, is somewhat trivialized in that case. That's not something that we're okay with, it's not something that we want, and we want to ensure that, that our partners that have worked so hard to build that relationship are able to preserve it moving forward. We want to give them the choice in how they can take our solution to market. So they're certainly able to do that, and, and to date, that's how our solution is sold, is, is the resale model. They're reselling our solution. Moving forward, we've introduced our MSP dashboard. And what this allows is for a partner to now be the front end to Aruba Central. They can represent Aruba Central as if it's their own service offering. They can see all of their customers from the management dashboard. They can even manage and monitor, take <coughs> notifications from their, for, from their customers and respond to them and provide that value added service that the customers love them for and even brand the interface with their branding so that it's a complete uh, MSP experience for that reseller. Now this is something that's typically uh, reserved for larger partners and telcos where you'll see they offer these capabilities and these bespoke solutions. We've made this a zero hassle offering so that even the smallest partner can take advantage of, of uh, cloud networking and offer it to their customer base. And again, I think it's best if I just show you how simple it is and what the capabilities are. So Vishal, if you don't mind. Yeah, so you're looking at the MSP dashboard right now. It gives you a neat summary of what all your customers are, how many devices you have assigned to them, what their subscription renewal schedule looks like for the next 12 months. So it gives you a very neat summary of where are we with our MSP practice. Uh, now, if you want to create, I'll, I'll show you how easy it is to create a new customer, for example. So you would go under the customer section, hit add customer, you just specify a customer name. Uh, you can pick a default template to choose from. So for example, if you have coffee shops, you want to run a specific configuration by default in them, that is available as a template. You define an email. You can have, so there's no practical limit. You can have a number of templates available. Absolutely, you can have a number of templates available. And you would put in the email of the customer. An email would be sent 
uh, to the customer, now you can customize that email. It need not show up that it's coming from Aruba Networks. It would, you, as MSP practice, you would want your customers to receive that email as if it's being sent from himself. So yeah, you can customize that too. So once you, uh, what's what's actually in those templates? Is that just like the, the look and feel of their dashboard, or is that like RF settings? RF switch? settings. The comp uh, so what you can do is basically for that customer, you can have a default group. Now that default group is what you're deciding by this template. So all the access points that you put into that default group would get this default template, and this default template consists everything right from RF settings to VLAN settings, you can, that, that's the whole suite you're looking at. It's not a subset, it's a comp So all the access points that move in the default group are making use of this template. So yeah, uh, that, that's about that. And um, let's take a quick look at how, once we have added our customer, how would you go about assigning devices to them? So I, I've gone into my inventory, I see I have two devices which are unlicensed, customer is I'm, I'm myself the customer right now. So say I want to assign it to a customer that I just added, what I would do is, first I have to license this device. So I would go under manage license, I would pick one device, I would assign it a license, okay? The next thing I wanna do is, I want to assign this device to a particular customer rather than MSP himself. So I would go under manage devices, choose the device that I previously licensed, assign a customer, choose the particular customer that I want to assign it to. So that's how, it's, that's how easy it is for, you, for an MSP to just pick and choose what devices go out to which particular customer that he wants. Now let's take a look at, because I've assigned the device to a customer, what more I can do with it. So I would go under my customer section again, and I've assigned this device to Man Coffee Shops. I would click on the customer ID, and it would transition me to the standard enterprise view that you guys are already aware of, that we have already walked you through, uh, that would it would transport you into that standard enterprise view that you're already familiar with. You can do everything over here, which you used to do previously in Central as a standard enterprise customer. So if I, if I, my MSP is uh, aptly named MSP, <laughs> I would log in, or the customer would log in, or my team would log in, and they would see this screen Yes. Branded with, with my brand. Yeah, that's the, on the top left is what you're looking at, the logo customization that you can do. So once a customer logs in, he would look at this and he would get a feel of that, okay, I'm using MSP services. And can I template out uh, user permissions for the customer so they can actually go in and make configuration changes on their own or is it everything coming up to me? I see. So what you're asking is what all a customer can do. Right? So How if, limiting can I get? Like, yes, you can go here, look at the dashboard, but if you <clears throat> have somebody on your team that knows what they're doing, they can configure some RF stuff as well. Absolutely, so how I would go about that is, I'm now right now I'm in the customer view, right? So I can add a user here, and I can say he can be administrator, read-only, read-write, or guest operator, just specific for this particular customer. So I do have that flexibility. I can add my IT administrator for this particular customer. Say there's an IT ID, I can add him as IT admin. Say there is a guest operator, I can add him as a guest operator over here. And this particular account would be specific to this user only. Okay, thanks. So that's pretty much I wanted to show you about our managed service practice. Thank you, Vishal. Offer. Thank you. So you can see with the, the MSP dashboard capabilities, it is very simple, the same muscle memory and workflows that you would have in administering your own site with a handful of, of additional uh, mouse clicks. You've now created uh, the capability for uh, you as, a, as an MSP to roll up and manage uh, your customer base of, of cloud network uh, customers. This is not limited to just the configuration. Monitoring is included, troubleshooting is included, notifications can come to you, you can be the first responder. And again, this gives our partners the capability to maintain that customer relationship. So they have the choice. They can go the resale model, which that's, uh, to date that's been how we've, we've rolled it out, but they can go down this path as well. Yes? Will you also have the ability to generate reports for your customers if they want? specific reports on their wireless networks? Absolutely, That's the reporting module is consistent in there as well. 
And it's something you could schedule out, so it's, if they want something weekly, Absolutely. it automatically gets sent. That's correct. The API gateway, um, you showed off the console functionality. Does the API gateway provide you an ability to consume the console, remote console functionality? Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Can I follow up with you on that one? Yep. That's that would a good be, one. That would be very cool. I'll grab that one. <laughs> yes. So that, that MSP interface, is it look, it's sort of a wrapper around just how I access the different customers. Is there anything that rolls up across potential customers up to the MSP level, like like the analytics with those stop at the customer, sort of the customer container? They, there's no sort of overarching roll-up analytics or anything like that? Uh, we have basic reporting on that right now. Okay. As we just launched the capability, we'll continue to augment that, most notably as we get, as we get good feedback. I think, just to add, I mean, I think what would be interesting, at least at that MSP level, is to get things like uh, device mix that's out there, client device mix. With the roll-up the roll summaries. AP mix, you know, the, that kind of stuff. You know, I think individual customer analytics are probably not less important than but getting, you know, knowing what devices are on sure. the network that I'm trying to support across all my customer base. That might be interesting. That makes sense. That makes sense. So this, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, on the role-based access, let's say you give some a customer a little bit more control over making changes. Is there a way to see them deviate away from a, the baseline or the configuration that you've set for them, and then even see what kind of changes they've made, just in case you have to roll back those changes? Kind of so, like <clears throat> TACX-based uh, <clears throat> Like the default template that we push down, if you make changes to that, that does come visible into that MSP. But if he creates newer groups by himself, uh, if you're familiar with Central, you must be familiar with the idea of groups. So if you make changes to default group, that would be visible to MSP. But if he changes the groups that he himself created, that would not be. OK. Are the templates, are those um, persistent, or is it kind of a one-time push? So. If I use a template to build 20 sites and I update that template? Yeah, it would be pushed down. It will be pushed down. It okay. would be pushed down. 